Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're on the Don't Give Up Our podcast, and I'll let Sylvester tell you the name of our the, the, the name of our episode. This is uh Adapt and Die, uh in conjunction with the uh, Adaptive Athlete Podcast. Um hosted by me. Uh, Sylvester Poe, co-hosted by Travis, and we have a special guest in here today, a friend of mine um, for about seven, eight years now. Yeah. Um, very awesome man of God, um, plays multiple sports. Uh, everybody in the audience, I'm going to need y'all to give it up for Samoya... Say your last name for me again. Uh, Matangi. 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 Yeah. Okay, so give everybody like a, a intro, name, city, nationality, disability, things like that, so we can know, so they can know exactly who they're talking to. Yeah. Um, my name is uh, Samoana Matangi, but uh, on YouTube, I go by the No Handed Bandit, and I'm from Utah. Uh, my, uh, ethnicity is Samoan and, uh, Sa American Samoan. My mom is from Pennsylvania and my dad is from Samoa. Um, so yeah. How, how does that, how did, how does that work for you? Um, being, uh, Samoan and uh, American Samoan, um, in this day and age, uh, and, and just growing up, just brief bio, early childhood, um, upbringing. Yeah. Like that. Um, so uh, as a Samoan, they kind of, uh, we, we played a lot of sports in uh, as a little kid. And uh, the uh, sport that we would play uh, mostly is football. And you can you can see that there's a lot of football players in uh, in the NFL that are from of Samoan descent. Um, and uh, when we're raised, we're raised uh, to show respect and um, uh, especially to our elders and to our coaches. And uh, it uh, it it. It helps a lot in sports, especially because uh, in sports, it's important to listen to the coach and be humble. And uh, that's one of the things, one of the main things that uh, Samoan people, younger people are taught to do is be uh, respectful and uh, humble. And when when you do that, you stay um you stay ready and you also stay ready to learn because a lot of times when you think you know everything, uh, you're not going to learn anything. You have to uh, be humble enough to uh, um, humble enough to to listen and, and hear what the coach is saying. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what do you mean by a type of adapt or die? Well, what, 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 what's that mean to you? Uh, adapt or die is, um, is I think about it mostly what reminds me of it is uh, uh, the dinosaurs, right? The dinosaurs, when they were on the earth, the reason why they died is um, they didn't adapt to the weather and to the weather changes. And then also for me, um, I think that a lot of people they die not not physically but inside they're dead because they don't want to change they don't want to adapt to a new situation um, and like for me I had an accident when I was uh, 34 I was uh, caught in the power lines and uh, my hands were burnt and I had to have them amputated and you can see I have two prosthetic hands uh and if i would have not been ready to adapt then inside i would be dead because i can't do the thing that i love and i at the time i was loving um 
I was loving to play basketball at that time. And so if I would have not learned to adapt to the uh, new hands that they got me, then inside I would be dead. I wouldn't be not doing the thing that I love. You, you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yes, it makes plenty of sense. Um, I read in an article um, posted maybe about seven years ago that your biggest influence was was your brother. Mm. Um, I don't want to mess up his name, so uh, yeah. pronounce that for me. Yeah, his name is uh, Fatu. Fatu and it, 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 you, and it was said that he had a, a similar accident to what you had uh, three years before. Yeah. So how was how was that witnessing his accident and then give me the emotion um, mm -hmm. that you felt three years later going through the exact same thing? Um, well, when he got hurt, I was uh, devastated because I felt like, oh, man, his life will change a lot. And he he got shocked and he lost his right arm right at the shoulder. Right. Um, fortunately, he's he's left handed. And uh, I just I tried to encourage him to keep playing basketball, even though it was frustrating for him. Uh, and he kept trying and uh, he, he can shoot the ball well now with his one arm. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's tough being the guy that's watching because you always want to take the pain away from the person. If you can, you, you're wishing you can take away that pain from them. But uh, unfortunately, you can't. It's uh, it. And then when I got hurt, I saw him. You know, one of the things that helped me the most is him telling me to go to group, a uh, group meeting for burn survivors. And when I went to group meeting for burn survivors, uh, the mental part is what I was working on and uh, it helped me so much to uh, strengthen the mind and uh, get ready for the world and adapt to the world because the world ain't going to adapt to me, right? Right. The whole world ain't going to change their doorknobs. They're not going to uh, slow down for me. So I, 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 after going to group meeting and talking to a psychologist and uh, talking to my brother, uh, I was ready to go and uh, change for the better um, and adapt. So, so is it, is it safe to say that, uh, him kind of being your uh, adaptation buddy, mm -hmm. a, a co-partner, so to say, kind of helped along the way with that um, that adaptation, considering that um, you both uh, was able to go through the same thing? So, uh, yeah, I would say that he was uh, my uh, kind of like the pioneer that went through it before me. And, and it's different because um, his amputation is different. So the way he does things is uh, uh, quite different from me. Um, but fortunately, I was able to find someone in Kentucky. And he's, I think he's watching right now. He texted me that he's watching Jason Coger. And uh, Jason Coger helped me to learn how to do some things like uh, go to the bathroom and take a shower and once he taught me those things, then I, I just started uh, going out and, and it helped me to know that I can I can do anything I want to. It's just uh, takes um, the mindset to adapt to the new hands. OK, OK. And and how was the how, how was like your social life and, and date life after this this? transition in this this um this pivot in your life uh my social life it, it i mean most of my friends stayed my friends but i it, i took a it took me a for dating it's tough because uh dating women want to hold my hand and and 
some of it is this, the limitations of this, but some of it is things that I learned before, um, before things, the way that I, that I uh, interact with the, uh, um, the ladies um, sometimes can be stern or difficult or hard. Uh, it's, it's a different dating is tough for me. I'll sell that much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. it is for, for most people with disabilities, mm -hmm. right? Cause like, it's, it's hard to, to kind of really, um, get the person that you're talking to or your, or your mate or your partner, um, the level of understanding of your your situation or or your disability because they they haven't experienced it yeah um, so it's, it's kind of not the norm uh, for you yeah um, it take, takes a lot of communication and and also yeah. you have to adapt too I have to adapt to that that um, being able to talk to them and say hey. Uh, well, you can hold my hand or you can hold my arm if you want to, uh, cause some uh, women like to the, a lot of them are, uh, their love language is touch. And so touch becomes a little bit strange when I'm touching them with like a metal, uh, hook. So. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Un definitely understand that. Definitely understand that. Yeah. I'm um, going Travis, you you you're married, correct? Yes, I am. So, uh, for someone like 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 Sam or someone uh, like me, what what was that like when you finally found your wife? It was it, it was amazing because I had given up because I had three engagements that that went went wrong. But she found, but but I found her, and she found me, and um, and it's still an adjustment because you know when I walk, I fall a lot. You know, I've been falling since I was thirteen, and um, and a lot of times she is always concerned about when I fall. I say I'm okay. I've been falling since I was thirteen, and, and um, and like Sam said, it takes it, it takes communication to to um to really get. The woman, or or, or um, or 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 if it's female, to um to um to um to ask, to, to actually get a hook and understand that um that that um that we're okay. The um because our lives are different. Um, because our lives are not like theirs. And right. this may this may be their first time dealing with this just the de dealing with it dealing with that situation in their lives. So it takes communication and it takes us being patient and not getting upset because they don't understand what we're going through. Would you um, say that that um her ability to learn was a, a great strength in the beginning stages of, of your relationship? Yes, it was. Okay, okay. Um, and we're, we're talking adapt or die, ad, adapt or die today. And this is um, don't give up slash adaptive athlete podcast. Um, Sam, you play a lot of different sports. Um, give me your your top three and the. Uh, Give me maybe two or three challenges that you had to uh, adapt to and overcome in, in those specific sports. So I'm going to start uh, from a number three. And I would say number three is just running like long distance, five miles. Um, uh, the thing that I had to do to run is I had to take these arms off and just run with no hands. And, and it, it's the hard, the, where the difficulty comes is just getting ready. Like you have to think about the way you're going to uh, get ready. So I put my shoes on, my running shoes on first. And then I put my armband and my headphones on. 
and then I take off these arms and then I, you know, I just go run and listen to my music and uh, that that helps me a lot. Um, and then number two was snowboarding. Uh, I I didn't mm. I didn't snowboard before my accident, but my brother, that was one of the things he uh, got me into is he got me into snowboard racing and I, I, I was trying to make the Paralympics and I would practice around three times a week back uh, in 2016. I made uh, the World Cup in uh, Canada and uh, after Keep that, I, I, I got injured and uh, I got a concussion. So I was just kind of um, just wanted to be safe. And then my number one sport is basketball. I play basketball about three times a week. And it's the same thing. I have to think about the steps before I do them, like in order. So if I if if I get my arms on first, then I can't get my shoes on. So I have to get my shoes on first. And then I put on these arms that have hoops on the end. And uh, I'm able to dribble and shoot the ball. And at first, I had these different hands that, that hold the ball on the side. And so I only could do this shot like this. Um, uh, luckily, they uh, there was this guy in Miami that made these basketball hands. And uh, I tried to call him to make me one. And, and fortunately for me, he started to uh, get them mass produced through uh, this company called TRS. Mm. And T TRS uh, is out of Colorado. They sent me a, a free hoop hand, which run about $500, but they said, I have to uh, make a commercial for it or, or just film myself shooting and they were going to use it for their promos. And so okay. they still do that. Um, and, uh, and uh, my game has been progressing ever since. Like you get used to a certain thing and the way you, the way I, I uh, get used to is through practice. You know, uh, you don't get better without practice and practice is it takes time, takes dedication, takes uh, the right mindset. Um, it takes all those things. Some people, they don't want to do the work. And so to adapt, you have to do the work. Uh, and if you don't do the work, then you, you can't adapt, you know. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, I, I, I use, I use this analogy. A butterfly. If a butterfly does not struggle to get, out, not struggling to get, out, to, get, to get a cocoon, it can't fly. Yeah. If, if I see a butterfly struggling, to get out, struggling, struggling, and I help it out, I'm actually hurting it because that that pain and struggle that it goes through, that gives mm. us wings strength to fly. Yeah. Amen. And and what do y'all both say? This could be for both of y'all. Uh to those that think um us wanting equality as far as um on a competitive level um as sympathy and rather us trying to let them know like no like it ain't that we want their sympathy but we want the the acknowledgement that we can compete um rather that be in paralympics um or or uh special olympics or even in non-disabled spaces um especially in the non disabled spaces uh competitively yeah um i i just when i go play and, and i don't i play a lot with um able-bodied people yes. and what i want them to do i don't i'm not expecting a handout i'm not expecting them to let me shoot it or let right. me dri dribble by them i right. i want them to try their hardest so that I can get better. And what I am expecting is, or what I would like is for them to treat me like any other player, right? 
I know right. that a lot of times when I show up to a new court and uh, uh, the people, I'm brand new to them, so they they don't pass it to me. And uh, and sometimes it feels like, oh, they're not passing it to me because they see I don't have hands. And uh, I just, the only thing I can do is go out and work and get rebounds and then putbacks. And, uh, but it's, it's difficult when you have to prove yourself every single time you go out on the court, right? Right. Uh, and so it gets tiring. But the thing is, the only thing that will get you, get me past that is I love basketball that much like like if you love something that much where you lose your hands and all of a sudden you still want to play you still want to uh and you go to games and people don't pass to you because they that they, they see you don't have hands then you know you love that thing if you just put up with all that stuff and you still still out there on the court okay okay what about you travis for me, I just want a chance to prove myself. They just, just give me that chance to prove myself. Like um, like Sam said, um, don't be light on me. Come at me as hard as you want to. Mm -hmm. Because but want to say because when I play sports, um I talk junk. Hmm. I talk junk, I, I play hard. I right. want to say I, I'm, I'm say I, I I don't ran somebody I don't ran somebody over in basketball. Um, I don't push them down and 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 and, and, and I just want that chance. I right. just want a chance to prove myself. Okay. I want I want to say and and that goes in every aspect of my life, in the job, in in driving, in um in um in in, in, in anything. Don't count me out. Don't count me out because I look different. You know, you know, it's just like years ago, women were thought at not to not be able to play basketball. Well, now they have. Well, now they have a league. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for a day when there's a league for us who play wheelchair, for, for, for play wheelchair basketball. I'm looking for a day when it's league for us who um for us who are classified who are classified as disabled. I'm gonna say um I I, I hope I hope to see a day for for a day. That that um that's my hope and prayer to see a day when we have a league where we can play and make money. Yeah, that's why I would just for you you actually helped me get into my next transition. Um, what do y'all think that it, it would take for us to get recognized more in a professional athlete sense? Um, you do have some that, that, that have been out there. We talked about it last podcast, like a Jim Albert for the MLB or the Shim Krim Griffins for the NFL, the Darren Collins from the NFL. Uh, even right now with, with Emmanuel Hansel, um, as far as uh, basketball is concerned, and the Kevin Lows, the Zach Hoskins, um, who have played at college and professional ranks against able bodies um, and are doing phenomenal jobs. What do you think it would take for us to get more recognition in those professional spaces to where we could probably get a paid professional uh, a league or 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 organization that that will be willing to pay our athletes uh, like the pros. Uh, I think well, I was thinking about this question uh, a little bit, and uh, sometimes I I think that. Uh, Sometimes you have to take into consideration all the things that go into playing basketball and to have an appreciation for someone else that's playing basketball without hands or in a wheelchair. Um, and it's funny because people, a lot of people talk about, oh, I don't want to, um, 
I don't want to watch uh, NFL or NBA because they get paid too much. But here we are. We're we're me and you. Uh, we're not getting paid anything. So if you're really telling the truth that you want to watch this, those you don't want to watch those other sports, then come watch us. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, and what I think it'll take, it'll take for them to realize that 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 the um because before women that um I I was watching a documentary about 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 women's sports and and um and they thought that the women wouldn't bring any money in um into the colleges or um or they thought, or they, or they thought they had no that that the, or, they, or they thought they had no value. But yeah. I think, but but I think it'll take for us to actually be out there and show the world that we have value, to show the world that people will pay to see us perform. Well, 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 that's just the thing, though, right, Travis, is like we do have certain athletes that have reached those those mountaintops as far as the professional ranks. But even with them, you you really hear about it. So um, how, how do we change that to where like we are getting the look we are getting the the shine and the the highlights on the ESPNs and and uh, Fox Sportses and things like that to where people do know that we're out here. Um, how how do you go against that when it, it seems like there's kind of like a a shadow or overcast uh over us for for those that that are doing phenomenal things out here. Um. Where they're not getting that that look. Well, I think it's time for us to create our, our own league. It's time for us to create our own league and get I get and want to say and get our own marketing person and um and um and want to say um because because the first women who played basketball in the Olympics. They get the um on say um they didn't get paid as much as the the men, right? But they still but they still play because they know that their playing would affect the lives of other women. So um so we need to find so so we need to be or find trailblazers who are willing to to go through the the hard times. I want to say, think about Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson was football. Jackie Robinson went through a whole lot, but because of him, you got you because 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 of him going through that, you have a slew of black players in the in a um playing um actually playing best right now. Um, so so it's going to take us create our creating our own league. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. Is uh, it just gotta take uh, uh, all of us combined because um, teamwork, teamwork makes the dream work. That's the saying. And uh, right. to find enough people, we we have to like some just uh, combine our efforts and uh, create something because uh, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is uh, then they they. They come and uh, try to. Um, they watch it and they're entertained, and then that's just how everything is built, you know. Right, right. Okay, so Sam, you you played with me on on my team uh, when we played for the ABA, um, and it. I was listening to you just now talk about we have to come together. Um, I remember when we first started, I reached out to a few organizations. I'm not going to say no names because I'm not going to be petty like that right now. Um, but there were some organizations that were out there that had sports for us 
with us playing against us um, that would say uh, there's a liability issue that you would have to worry about because what if they get hurt or what if their confidence gets shattered if they lose? Mm. Um, why not just stick to the programs and the organizations that we have out there already and just be happy with that? To what do you say to to things like that? Um, I say they. I mean, if they're really uh, they really love the game, then they shouldn't be afraid to face anybody. And uh, like over here in Utah, when I play in leagues, uh, sometimes they are. Um, uh, I know they think that they're going to get hurt and this and that. And then I, I'm like, for real, though, uh, even if I did have hands and I slap your head, you're going to get hurt, too. So it doesn't matter. Uh, it shouldn't matter uh, about the prosthetics. That's also, there's an example of uh, people that run with those running blades. Yes. Um, and sometimes it, it can be a mechanical advantage to have those. But uh, at the same time, they're they're using muscles that are different to make those legs go. And so right. you have to appreciate those things, like appreciate the, the full mechanics of the game. Right. Uh, right. All the things that go into even before you step on the court. Oh, that that guy had to tie his shoes. He had to tie his shorts or he had to figure out a way to do this or, or that. And all that stuff, it deserves to be respected and uh, appreciated. Um, and also, it, it's a it's a good thing to take into someone's life. You see someone out there uh, giving it their best to play basketball. That's what the lesson to be learned is. You go home and you do the same thing at work. You do the same thing uh, in the yard. You do the same thing. You don't make excuses. This is the lesson to be learned. And, and as far as um, what, what I would say, right, is like as far as those that's, that's probably thinking about what if a disabled person gets hurt or um, what if they their confidence gets shattered, um, my thing would be if we're looking for equality and we're saying that we want to be looked at like a regular athlete. If LeBron James were to get fouled hard, you wouldn't say, oh, poor LeBron for getting fouled. Or, um, oh, man, I know uh, it wasn't a good idea for LeBron to play basketball because he just lost and now his confidence is shattered. So why would you look at us any different um I think that, it, oh, go, go ahead. ahead i just think it sometimes they often look at uh people with disabilities with pity and uh instead of uh it's empathy versus sympathy it, empathy is they feel sorry for me uh, and my no hands Instead of, and that's sympathy, but uh, empathy is put themselves in my shoes and think about if they could do what I'm doing. I, some of them, I doubt it, you know, right. a lot of them, I doubt it. And that's, right. that's the, that's the, the thing is empathy and sympathy. Yeah. Yeah. And what they don't realize is that we've had to go through a whole bunch of struggles. A lot more struggles, a lot more struggles, a lot, a lot more than they had to go through. Because of me, I had strokes when I was 11. Woke up, couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't do nothing. Had to go through therapy. And that was a painful experience. And today I'm walking, today um, I'm as strong as an ox. And I want to say, um, you know, it's kind of like the things that I went through, they have actually prepared me for this time. 
what they don't realize is that what we, what, 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 what we have gone through has, has actually made us rock hard. They right. see us that they see us as people who are lacking when we have when, when we have gained a lot on experiences that have occurred in our lives. That 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 that's what I have to say. Okay, okay. And uh, Sam, you you say that you love basketball, so I know that you've probably seen the story of Emmanuel Hansel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it. Okay, okay. So this is what I would want to ask you: with, with somebody like him, who you can see he has phenomenal talent, um, uh. And, and you you you've seen him compete, um, and the way that he competes, man, it's 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 amazing to watch, right? Yeah. But you do have those that think like, okay, he he he's played high school ball, and that's one thing. He's getting recruited by colleges, and that's another. But for him to try to aim for something like the NBA would be maybe too far um what, what what is your perspective or something like that um i always i mean if you're gonna do something you want to go as far as you can with that thing so for emmanuel hansel i'm i'm cheering for him to make the nba and i don't think uh he's gonna be hurt by shooting for it and not making it actually he's going to become stronger if he doesn't make it or if he makes it but you can't not try not right. trying that's the same thing as adapt or die like don't let your dreams die because you have something different your body's different your uh uh the way you function is different you have to adapt and you have to i mean is i would say if to him if i could talk to him Man, don't give up, man. Just like the right. show, don't give up hour right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't give up. And, and what do you say to, to to the people that think like, like I said, like the, the Special Olympics or Paralympics or like they, they'll see somebody like him and be like, okay, well, he played high school, but that that's just it. And then he goes on to college and he plays college. And it's like, okay, well, that's his ceiling. Mm. Uh, what do you say to those to those people that, that try to limit us and give us, well, this could go for both of y'all. Um, they try to give us that ceiling of, okay, because you're disabled, this is as far as you can go. Well, I think there's a, there's a lot of people out there that judge everyone on everything, even people without disabilities. They're making judgments all the time. And uh, the best is when they prove them wrong. Um, and I think that, uh, of course, everyone knows that you shouldn't judge everyone. It's like either if you, if you're a Christian, you see it in the Bible, don't judge your, uh, lest you be judged. Or if you're not a Christian or not, a, uh, you're, if you don't believe in anything, it's, uh, all the, the stars are like, don't judge me. And, and that's, that's a truth. Uh, we shouldn't be judging. Just wait and watch and see what they do. Uh, right. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. And how and what, do you, how, how, oh, my bad, Travis, go ahead. And what I say, I don't care what nobody says about me. What matters what I think about, what I think about myself. You say I can't do it, that's your opinion. But mm -hmm. I know for myself, that I, I have the ability and the power within me to overcome anything that comes my way, because I've been doing because I've been doing my whole life, and 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 and, and anything I put my mind to, I've I, I've I, I have also, I, I have always done it. Accomplished, I've, I've accomplished it. It may have taken longer for me, but at least I did it. I got it done. I may have had to adapt or do it in a different way, but I got it done. I, I was just gonna ask, how do y'all, how, how do you, cause there's a saying that says, 
sticks and stones might break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Given this day and age of social media and and uh, the way that the world is now communicating, how do you adapt uh, in our situation um, to, to that type of environment that constantly would say, Travis, um, wheelchair basketball is is where you belong. You don't need to try to become uh, a professional because that's not realistic. Or Sam, uh, you you run track and, and snowboard and play basketball, and that's all fine. And Danny for church leagues and 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 different uh, recreation leagues and things like that. But to to want to become a paid athlete is is nonsense um so you're asking what uh what do i say to them that say that to me how do you adapt to that like how do you how do you overcome those type of ridicules and 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 uh termination uh not termination but uh comments and things of that sort when when it's it's plastered almost everywhere yeah i think um the saying adapt or die um sometimes can look like oh man he said die but it's a dream that dies and if you um are gonna let everyone else what they're saying tell you what you can or can't do then your dream is gonna die the adaptation is to not let those words uh determine what you're gonna do uh, that's the adaptation. When when someone says you can't do something, go show them you can. That's the only the only adapting that that I can do for someone else's saying something. You know, show yeah. them you can. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and you know it's almost like almost like almost like 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 LeBron James, like 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 LeBron James, Michael Jordan. They were not seen as high-class athletes at the start. They were told that you're not good enough. They were told that you don't got the skills. Right. But they overcame that. Um, uh, um, the football story, the blind side, he came from a family that was broken. But he still overcame that obstacle in his life. So it's like you know, it's you know, it's just like Sam said. It takes a strong mental ability to overcome anything that comes in our way. We have to believe in ourselves, know we can do it. I, I don't care if Mama says, if Daddy says, if Brother says, if Court. I don't care who says it. If you believe it, you can achieve it. Right. Okay. So my next question would be what what would y'all what would y'all advice be to um say investors or people that would want to uh donate into something like what we're talking about um as far as uh, given a, a person with a disability or a uh, limitation, a, a shot, or um, want to help build a, a paid league for our people, um, but they're kind of nervous of the return on their investment failing uh, because there just really ain't no gauge of how many people would want to really invest in watching uh, disabled athletes. Um, if there's investors watching, uh, there's always a return on investment. You you could see Hansel; he has a he's on a commercial already. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was Super. a Powerade or something. He got a Gatorade commercial. And he got a. Who was commercial with J. Cole? And and uh the the return on the investment is already happening for them that uh the Puma and the uh Gatorade. So uh 
I, I think that the same thing can be said to them, adapt or die. Uh, right now, there's a movement to have more inclusion for everybody. Right. You could see yeah. it in all the commercials, like uh, commercials for soap. All different types of bodies are in the commercials now. So um, it's time for you, for those investors to get ready and get on the train or else you're going to get left behind. That's all. Uh, it's, you better adapt or die. The same thing. And, you know, it's almost like people who invested in Apple when they're starting out. They um they have a big return. Those who invested in Walmart when it started out. Those who invested in Amazon when it started out. Amazon was not popular back in the day because yeah, they was because because, because 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 they were saying that people <laughs> going to a store right now, they're not gonna buy stuff online. But those people that got in on the ground floor. They're getting paid. The ground floor of this movement, it can pay off. It can pay off big. Because when I was in high school playing basketball and wheelchair soccer and, uh, and discus and shot put, if I would have kept practicing, because, 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 because in high school, could nobody touch me in basketball. Just think about if that was a college team back back then for me. Just Man. think, just what? think about, just think about that. Was, just think about, think, think, just, just, just think about the athletes like me who 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 were actually good in high school. Yeah, man. Like if if there was an adaptive team in in high school and colleges, like. You probably would have more adaptive athletes, just being real. Probably would have more adaptive athletes. The thing, the thing that makes it, the thing that makes it, it difficult is because there, there isn't none, right? So then, like, yeah, Special Olympics, Paralympics, like, yeah, that, that's kind of like the, that's the, that's the, the mountaintop ceiling for us right now. But if there was like, yo, you can get drafted out of high school or college and go play over here to this league where there's adaptive athletes over here getting paid to play ball, like that would be amazing. Would it not? Yes, yeah. it would. Yes, it would. Or if you knew like a UCL, a U. UCLA or I don't know what the popular uh, college is where you at, Sam. Um, but if you knew they had a adaptive or an inclusive team where you could you could become an athlete over there, I'm pretty sure you probably would have. Yeah, you know, I, th I think that uh, we're on the forefront. So uh, every every league has a start and. Uh, and and we have to do the work and uh write to the colleges do all that because uh we're at the beginning so um if we do, do the work how that can affect the the, the next generation that's exactly like, what i was going to say yes, is that yes, we, yes. if we do the work we're going to help the next generation it might it might not happen for us, but at least the next generation will be one step closer, you know? So true. That, that, that is so, so true, man. And, and like I said, I, I, um, I, I got a, I got a, um, a few ideas of what I would like to do. Me and Travis talk about it often. Um, where I, I I would love to create that, you know, for the next generation to be able to have a league like that, um, for real, for real. Yeah. Um, if you could talk to the next generation right now, Sam, and if you could give them a spark 
or 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 some words of encouragement for for the little boy or the little girl that might want to play ball or might want to be an athlete. You don't have to be basketball. It could be tennis. It could be soccer, uh, golf, whatever the the sport that or a thing dream that they have of of competing in. Um, if you could give them a word right now, what would that be? I I think if I would tell them a uh, five year old or a six year old that's probably watching with their parents right now. What would you tell them? I would tell them to uh, do it for the love of the game. If you do it because you're mad, that fire only lasts a short time. If you do it because you don't want to be sad, same thing. But love lasts forever. Love is a strong emotion. And if you love the game of basketball, you'll do it no matter what hardships come. It's uh, kind of like a mom and her child. Moms will do anything for their child. Most moms. I'm not going to say that about every mom. But they will do anything for their child because they love them. And love is is the uh, – this. It's an everlasting um, energy uh, when you can love something. Yeah, and what I yeah, and what I would say to them is, I would say to them, if you love it, and you had and you have the ability to do it, do it, do it. Um, nothing beats a favor. Try. Because when I tried certain sports, I was not good at it at first, but I kept on practicing at it because I, I liked doing it. And wheelchair stock, I was a goldie. I would block wheelchair, I, I would block with my chair and my arms. And they said, Trav, we can't get nothing past you because I love playing the sport. And I practice, practice practice you know it's like i said just 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 like like lebron james um michael jordan they were told that they were told that they were not good enough either but look at where they are now all because they believe in themselves i would say believe in yourself if you fail you fail if you if you make you make it at least you tried if you try do something Give it, give, give it your, give it your best try. And I, th I, I think this generation that's coming up is, uh, it, it's, uh, they always have a saying that they don't want to take the L. And yeah. some, sometimes taking the L is the best thing because it, you learn the most when you take the L, when you, get the W you learn the least. And so mm. taking an L is not a bad thing. So if you try and you get defeated, that's okay. Take the lesson you learn and try again. Okay. okay. <coughs> yes. Now there is a benefit to the way that things are right now um, with social media, right? Because now we can find anything and everything right on our phone. Um, how do you think um, being able to to see our athletes that are out there actually doing phenomenal things and are getting the looks like the Emmanuel Hansels, right? How do you think that can impact this next generation? Considering that we really didn't have insight um, of the athletes that we know about now when we were that young, um, I think um, I think representation in the media is super important because when you see someone doing it with the uh, limitations on their body or uh, or their mind and you are a person with the same limitations and you see someone else doing it, 
you are uh you have that much more confidence that you can do it so like some sometimes some things that i did when i i saw my brother doing it and i say oh if my brother can do it i can do it or i saw my friend jason coger he was uh hunting he was fishing and he was uh doing all that stuff i said if he, if he can do it i can do it too he's not here so, now right huh yeah, he's he, now, he right? said, "Yeah, he said, what up on the on the chat?" So, uh, yeah, say hi back to him. Jason, reach out to us. We, I would love to have you on the show as well. That's interesting. He was hunting and everything. I never, I've never seen that before. You feel me? Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. I would love to hear how that how that works out and the adapt, adaptations that he has to go through to prepare himself from that. For that, yeah. um, what do you think life would have been like if you were getting those looks, Sam? Like if you was getting that media support like a regular athlete um, when you were playing or when you play, um, what do you think that would have done for not only your life, but for your impact in everything that you're doing with your motivational speaking and your um, the way that you just live life and encourage people. Um, I think that the media giving attention would would make it easier and make 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 me more motivated to do it because I see it's having an effect. But the thing that I need to remember is sometimes i'm having an effect and i'm making an impact and i just don't know it and so yeah. i have to keep on going no matter if the media gives me attention or not because you never know who you're going to impact you can't see it and a lot of times they don't tell you but we are all making an impact um and and i think that's important to remember there's some child out there with no hands watching me play basketball and then, oh man, if he can do it, I can do it. And, and he's going to have more time to develop his skills, more time to get the behind the back uh, crossover. And, and it just gets better and better from there. And a lot of times we can create our own media um, by the way we run our social media. Uh, we can be seen that way. So there's a lot of stuff we can do without the media. That's the that's the blessing of living in this age. Is, yeah, uh, yeah, being I was able to do your own media. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I and and I forget that it's not what you do, it's not what you do for watching. It's what you it's what you and don't watching, because when you do when they don't watching, it 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 becomes a part of you. Um, it becomes who you are. Mm -hmm. If you if you do it when you're not watching, you're gonna want well, you um you're gonna do it when it, you 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 you're gonna do it when you're watching. Like 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 Sam said, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. Got to have a mindset to overcome. But mindset that says no matter what comes my way, I'm gonna make it. Got to have that mindset. And, yep. and that's why we're here. You you feel me? Because I I felt. Uh, for the longest uh, of times when I was playing and, and trying to organize different things like what we're talking about, um, that uh, I get inspired just as much, if not more, just watching y'all. I remember me, me and you, Sam, used to talk about all the time, like mm -hmm. when I would have to be player, coach, GM, uh, <laughs> I was like, yo, I, I get, I get more, I get more of a high watching you all play than me actually in the game, right? So it's like, um, I just want people's stories to be heard and 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 journeys to be to be seen. Um, and with that being said, because we're 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 knocking on about a on about an hour now. Um, what would be, or who would be 
the next person that you would like to see on this show? Oh, uh, that's who, who you feel like their story deserves to be be to be heard. I think um Jason would be a good one, Jason Coger. Um I could think if you guys could land uh Emmanuel Hansel, that would be great for uh for the show. And uh I, I or, talked to his manager. They said that he's not really doing interviews right now, but anybody seeing this that's on social media watching this, tag him in it. Tag yeah. them in it. Let them know. Like uh Adaptive Athlete Podcast is here and would love to get them on the show. Even my my brother, he's a, he's a snowboarder uh, and he's, he uh, was on Team USA for uh, um, the uh, Paralympic team. And I think it was around 2016. Okay. Um, he could, you could invite him on there, on here. Um, that's a, uh, that's all I can think of right now. But uh, before, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to take up too much time, but I do want to say thank you for uh, reaching out to me uh, back in the day to come out to Atlanta. That was like one of the highlights of my uh, basketball career, Sylvester, playing on the Atlanta Hawks uh, court and, uh, yeah. and hooping it up, man. Uh Man, it's it's just been a blessing. Like I said, like I've never, I've never stopped fighting for us, man. I, I probably never will. Um, I I'm I'm passionate about what we do and what we're able to do, in spite of our limitations. Um, and it's just time to change the narrative, and it's time to start getting the accreditation and recognition that I feel like we deserve. So the people that you just named, is there a way that you can help us set that up? Yep. I can get you uh, hooked up with both of them and, and more. Um, I just, I have to think about it. So, but those two are the ones that come to my mind at this moment. Well, you said Jason's in here. Jason hit us up. We would love to have you on the show, bro. Um, like I said, this is this show is for at, adaptive athletes that that are are making an impact out here and uh, deserve to get that accreditation. And Sam, playing with you, you and Jamel are probably two of the most impactful players that I can say that I've played with. Um, watching you do what you do, what having no hands and watching Jermail do what he does with having no legs, um, very inspirational, bro. Very inspirational. Um, even when I first heard about you and you was doing snowboarding and things like that, I was like, well, how is he staying balanced? Mm -hmm. And like he's not afraid of like if he falls, how does he break his fall? He can't catch himself. Like it was so much, right? And then to actually see it in person, it's like, oh no, he he's he's like our Dennis Rodman. Like he's <laughs> like he's the man in the middle. Like he's the one that likes to do the dirty work, like rebound and mm -hmm. putbacks and rim protect. Um I remember one play we did in our first game where somebody had shot and I just knew it was about to go the other way. I started backpedaling hmm. to get ready to go play defense. And I look and Sam's above everybody with the ball at the rim <laughs> and putting it back. And I'm like, oh, we still on offense. Wait a minute. <laughs> um. And it was just so amazing to see, man. It was just so amazing to see. Or to see the effort that Jamel put in with he'll play offense. And because I knew that uh I knew that he had a difficulty running 
full court, I just had him play half court defense. And then the way that we all band together to kind of pick up the slack beyond half court was just it's amazing to see. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, man, love you. Love everything that, that we accomplished together. I, I pray for nothing but more blessings. Don't let this be the last time you come on the podcast, bro. If there's mm -hmm. anything that you ever want to come and promote, uh, that you want to let the people know about, if, if there's anything that's going on right now that you want to let them know about, go ahead and, and plug that in, man. And um, don't let this be your last time coming on the show. For sure. I, I come on anytime. Uh, and uh, the one thing I want to do is keep doing my YouTube channel and uh, I can get uh, people can get paid on YouTube. And I just uh, encourage everyone to go and subscribe to the channel and check out some videos. I'm trying to work on getting uh, monetized again. And we so, got all his social medias floating across the screen. Anybody that's watching or anybody that's listening, for the people that's just listening, Sam, tell them what your YouTube page name is and everything. So if you Google No Handed Bandit, uh, it will pull up my channel. And uh, there's all kinds of videos on how I do stuff. Some are uh, product reviews. Some are me playing Pokemon Go. But uh, all of it's pretty entertaining because uh, uh, I try to put my creative flair in the videos and uh, everybody uh, comes away edified. All right. And uh, Travis, my brother, my, my battery. <laughs> <laughs> this in my back. I promise y'all, y'all don't understand how many talks I have with this man uh, to get this going. And I'm appreciative of you for allowing me to host my podcast on your show. Um, plug everybody into everything that you got on that's going on too, because it's that's amazing, also, man. So, so hey, let them know. I, I, I'm in Winston Salem, North Carolina, playing wheelchair tennis, and um, and on this Thursday, I'll be doing water skiing. So on, um, so on, um, so. You gotta so, see you know, me footage of that, bro. So, so, you gotta so, see me footage of that. So, so you know, I'm, 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 I'm just out there live my life and showing the world that we are capable, that we are assets and not liabilities. Yes. Yeah. You want to you tell them about your your books and uh yeah 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 um I got two books out there one's called Don't Give Up one's called God's Gold Mine. Uh, life coaching. Yeah. He does a lot of amazing things, y'all. Y'all tap in with Travis for real. Um, Sam, once again, bro, I appreciate it. Don't let this be your last time coming on the show. Um, yeah. it is the 4th of July, so for everybody out there, happy 4th of July! Yes, happy 4th of July, Sam. Happy 4th of July, Travis. Happy 4th, uh, guys. Happy 4th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before and, and, and before and before we go, I got I got I, got, I, I have them to touch it. One, one sponsor, yeah, go ahead. Let's shout them out. Let's it's Jennifer Geigel, Epicure Leader. And what what do they do? Healthy foods. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're healthy foods, yeah. It says we have good and healthy and nutritious food. And and she's at Jennifer Geigel dot epicure dot com. Well, there y'all go, man. If y'all want some healthy, nutritious foods, especially in this day and age, this day of time where everybody's getting more cautious about their, their their health with everything that's going on in the world go get you some of that nutritious healthy food what's her what's her name again jennifer geigel jennifer geigel hit up her yeah. website run the website across again so they can see yeah, it I don't, I don't yeah um let's see here now nah. yeah. there you go right there 
Yeah, so y'all make sure y'all go to that right website. It's Jennifer Geigo Epicure that, that, dot com. Cool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and 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 the one last important thing is to hear the website. It is it, is um um is to hear this podcast. You can go to www.podpage.com backslash d o n t dash g i v dash u p that's h o u r or you can go to the website don't give up the movement dot net and the podcast and and the podcast videos and everything beyond there don't give up the movement dot net movement dot com i mean dot net yeah, y'all make sure y'all go check that out. That's don't give up the, the movement. movement. Make sure y'all check out the websites. Go look at a few few of, of our podcasts. Um we got some awesome things coming forth, man. I'm I'm just here to help get the word out. Like I said, I'm passionate about this. Travis, I appreciate you. Sam, I appreciate you. Once again, happy for the July, everybody. It's time for me to go. Enjoy some of this food and fireworks with my family. So, yeah. Uh, love y'all. Um, and see y'all boys later. All right. All right. And don't Peace give up. Everybody. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Please. We yeah, need adapt you. or die. And adapt or die. Yep. All, All right. right. Cool. All right.